Hey, quick question. What's the sexuality called when you're attracted to men and women, but neither are attracted to you? What's that called? Hi, that is a very good question. Um, I believe it is called by yourself. So you're someone who wants to make America great again and supports building the wall. No, that's a dumb Trumpster. I'm a cum dumpster. Why would I take a L when I could take it up? What would I sit up on my ass when I could run it up? When I said I was going back to the streets, when I said I was going to fuck outside, I meant exactly what I said. Do not try to cuff me. I'm on demon time. I am not cuffable. So last night, my best friend hit 40 people for her body count, so I decided to go buy a little cookie cake, and I'm going to write a cute little message on it. So this is the final product. It's honestly really difficult. I used this uh, cake frosting, but I didn't have scissors, so I had to bite the tip. That's why it kind of looks bad. Today's a big day, huh? 40 dicks. 40 dicks. Let's go! <laughs> How does it feel to have 40? Here's to 50. All right, ladies, help me out. So this guy seems damn near perfect, but we haven't had that conversation yet of what we're looking for. Well, maybe we should just ask him what his intentions are. I know I say this a lot, but I really think he's the one. Oh, he said he's not interested in playing any games and he's looking to settle down and get married. <coughs> Uh, wait, no. Uh, Why are you gagging? I thought we liked him. Don't you want to get married? Uh, it was more of a dream. Uh, it, now it's reality. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think I want it. Yeah, I, the thought of being with one dick for the rest of our life, it just, uh, we don't even know if it's good or not. So I back up. Fuck, I can't tell if we like him or not now. I'm a little confused. Is this not what we've been looking for? Can we find the kid who used to leave us on red? This is how we solve all of your problems he didn't text me back you have a full roster okay you line them up he ditches you you grab the next and the next and the next never in a time in history have men worked so hard for a less quality woman just look at the bachelor versus the bachelorette how women behave differently when women have to compete for The Bachelor, they're on their best behavior, but when men have to compete for The Bachelorettes, they usually kiss any man like it's a handshake, and even sleeping with several of the contestants on national TV before they chose the winner. That analogous to most modern women today, it's just that there's no camera there 24-7 like the dating shows to catch them in the acts. The gynocritic society, especially with the laws that favor women, have tipped most of the advantages to women and gotten rid of the consequences, so that's why modern women can misbehave. The thought in the video, who's telling her millions of female followers, college age and younger, to have a roster of men is the host of a slut podcast called Call Her Daddy, where it glorifies women sleeping around and encourages them to throw away their life for a summer of fun. Let's see how her followers respond. Top comment says, I'm not hot enough for a roster, Alex. Translation, she doesn't want to be a super hoe. Majority of women in the West are talking to multiple men at once, usually taking the highest bidder. Some women even take it a step further and have sex with all the men they're talking to. Another comment, I'm too picky to find a whole roster of men I actually like. What she's saying is that she only wants Chad and Tyrone, and she's probably part of their rotation because they have too many options to be manipulated. Where are we finding guys worthy to be on a roster? Because I can't find one guy that meets my standards. Ironically, the only thing that could prevent women from hoeing around are their sky-high standards.
Here's what to say to a man who cares about your body count. I saw a video the other day where a guy was asked whether he thinks body count matters in a woman he's about to date, to which he responded, if a girl is ran through, then she's for everybody else. I kind of feel like guys want girls for themselves. We care about women's body count because we want them to be all for ourselves. We don't want them to be any other guy. We want to provide for them. We want to be the man in their world. And then he went to go on and say that zero was his ideal body count for a woman because she got to be a virgin. I got to take that ish and show her what it's about because she's going to be mine at the end of the day. My dearest man child, what you're describing here is the fact that you see women as objects that you can have all for your little self because the reality is your concern with your body count shows how little faith you have in yourself that you'll measure up to any of the men she's been with before you. A woman who's never been with another man can't find you disappointing in or out of bed because she has no one to compare you to. And while I think it's admirable that you think you want to provide for a woman and be the man in her world. I think what you mean is that you want her to think that you're the only one who can provide for her because that's how you control her. Because you're not secure enough in yourself to be with a woman who is free to leave you but chooses not to. And so in conclusion, ladies, your body count is your past and any man preoccupied with your past has no faith in himself to make your future better. So the next time a man asks you what your body count is, tell him it's not his freaking business and leave the date as quickly as possible. Because why spend any time with a man who doesn't realize that even though your past and where you came from does matter, what matters more is what you learn from your past and where you're going next. This raging feminist conflates with the man wanting one woman to himself to him being a Chad who wants all women to himself, which is not the case. He wants loyalty if he's going to provide for her and protect her. It's not like expecting something for nothing because he understands her commitment is on the condition that he provides. And ultimately, he said he wants to be loved by one woman, not screw a bunch of virgins like Chad and Tyrone do. But of course, this feminist is shaming a guy who isn't going to measure up to the Chads and Tyrones because she doesn't understand that a woman isn't going to be loyal if there were other men who gave her better sex. This is why men want to marry virgins so they're not directly competing with maybe the highest echelon of men if the woman has a high body count. Let's see what the comments say. Top comment says it all. Body count says a lot about your ability to form meaningful relationships. That is all. It's called pair bonding, and modern women like the one in the video aren't truly loyal to one man. A woman commented, They care about our body count, but their high body counts are okay. I don't get it. It's because most men who are not born and built like a Greek statue have to achieve something in life to bed a lot of women. Like, if a man builds a successful company, thousands of people could be employed by it or indirectly, that's a little empire or kingdom he built, so of course he'll get rewarded the ability to spread his genes. He's a winner. While all an attractive woman has to do is just exist and she can get one of the best men out there. A chick responded to the comment, Double standards and entitled behavior. They want their cake and eat it. That's just top 10% of men who they're talking about. Meanwhile, the bottom half of men are virgins or rarely have sex. A thought commented, any man preoccupied with your past has no faith in himself to make your future better. Amen. That's wrong. The man can't build a future with a woman who's been blown out. She's not going to be loyal and she may even commit paternity fraud or have an STD. Another thought comments, it's embarrassing. They think just because we've slept with other people that if we're with them, we're not entirely theirs? Just reeks of insecurity to be honest. Someone commented, 304. And, gentlemen, she's not yours, it's just your turn. This is the best saying for modern women. Rent, not buy. Does any other woman who dates and deals with men wake up on a Sunday morning and be like, oh fuck, I'm the problem? Because that's me today. I realize that I am the issue. I called a guy at 2 in the morning last night, told him to come over. Okay, all right. He's a roster member, I call him Little Chico, and I do in fact call him that to his face. What are you gonna do? Anyways, all right, Nicole. And he said when he was leaving, looking forward to the next 2 a.m. call, I'm gonna go, oh, fuck, oh, oh, wow. And last night, I also gave my number to a bartender on my receipt, and he texted me, hey, how you doing, what's up? Okay. Nicole, what are you doing? Like, I don't know. I'm like, as a girl who complains about fuckboys a lot, I'm like, I think I'm the issue. I'm the fuck girl. Oh my God. So I guess next steps are, do I do something about it? I just don't really have time right now. Like I, I'm a little stressed and that's fine, but I just don't really have time.
it's a date. I don't know. So that's why I'm like, do I just keep fucking around and just doing this shit? I don't know. Also, last night was a night where I like was like, oh, I'm not going out. Obviously, I end up out. So yeah, I realize I'm the problem and probably going to keep going. Love these shops. All right, bye. To answer her question, no, but it might be too late. Think of the cock carousel as a black hole. The more men a woman sleeps with, the closer she gets to vacuum until she's pulled into the gravity and there's no way out. Then she gets fully sucked in. This is the real example of that. She can't help but to continue to sleep around. The modern woman lifestyle of going to college and having a career doesn't help to support a monogamous relationship because she doesn't have time or the energy as she said for dating, just for screwing. She wrote in the description, The diaries of an insane woman realizing she may be a fuck girl help. There's no such thing as a fuck girl or a girl player, etc. Because it doesn't take skill for a woman to say yes to get laid. If she's average looking, she can hook up with any guy anywhere she goes. One of the top comments says, I actually relate to this 100%, LMAO, whoops. That's not a surprise. Another comment, we are here for the chaos, bestie. She responded, ha ha ha, there's more where that came from. This is why it's hard for a female in today's society to stay a virgin, because modern women will cheer each other on to self-destruction. A dude asks, do you have a team member in Phoenix? He's asking about her roster of men she sleeps with. She responds, no, my team members haven't expanded outside of Charleston County yet. She may fuck the whole state by the time she turns 30. This isn't something women should be aspiring to, yet because of feminism, they're wearing it as a badge of honor. Right now, she's in her prime, so these relationship offers are a dime a dozen. But when she hits the wall, she's gonna wish to be in one. Very sad to see someone hit that threshold of the black hole where there's no going back. This is the put a finger down ho edition. Put a finger down if you've been in more than 10 relationships. Put another finger down if you've been in more than four relationships in the last year. Put a finger down if you've left someone you're dating to date someone else. Put a finger down if your body count is over five. Put a finger down if you've texted more than three people at once or talked to more than three people at once. Put a finger down if you've sent the same message to at least two people. Put a finger down if you've dated your ex's best friend. Put a finger down if you've moved on in less than a week. Put a finger down if you've dated someone that your friend liked. Uh, put a finger down if you have a spot that you bring dates. And then put a finger down if you've kissed more than two people in 24 hours. It's the so-called good girls may have the largest body count because they're good at hiding their hoe tendencies. Firstly, they look innocent so more guys are willing to believe them. Secondly, they're quiet about their MO. And thirdly, they don't seem to be affected by the sleeping around. Most good girls are from a two-parent household so you don't see the daddy issues. Women who've been ran through by chads, they're very jaded and cynical, so it's obvious they've been used up. While the good girls may have a hippie attitude and roll with the punches, not seeing getting ghosted by chad as a problem because they didn't expect a relationship. Notice the question slept with more than five. It's supposed to be a hoe edition, but they're still trying to cover their tracks by adding a reasonable number like five when they should have said 20 or 30. How are people reacting to her admitting she's not so innocent after all? The so-called good girl commented, Haha, I mean it says in general if you ever kissed anyone in 24 hours. So she backtracked on the kissing two people within 24 hours and now she's trying to claim the second person was a platonic kiss? Like her kissing her grandma goodnight? See, good girls are really good at covering their tracks even when they slip up. Lots of dudes in the comment section mesmerized by her looks, with comments like, Damn, you're hot. I don't care what you are other than gorgeous. Extremely beautiful. Another comment, Damn, haha, just wanted to be the third person within the 24 hours, haha. When a woman looks amazing, it's very easy for many men to ignore the red flags because they don't want to believe the worst. And for most men who are not Chads or Tyrones, 
they don't get many bites of the apple. They will swallow their pride just to be with her. Like the guy who just commented. He could be swapping spit with the second guy she kissed if he got his wish, but he's not thinking clearly because of her looks. Sis, listen, I know there are times that we make mistakes with our coochies. Don't worry, you're not alone. All you need to do is reset that kitty. Reprogram that coochie. Clear your coochie cachet. You have to remember that you are the master of your domain. You are the queen of your motherfucking castle. And also remember that if it didn't feel good, it doesn't fucking count. Fuck I look like. I'm not adding that to my body count. Get the fuck out of here. No amount of affirmations will reverse a woman's body count. The cat's already out of the box. The toothpaste is out of the tube. This is why asking for a body count won't really work, because they'll change the definition of sex, like what this foul-mouthed feminist did. All the thoughts can get together and claim the sky was green because the only opinion that matters is what the man they respect thinks of them. He's going to pick up on the slut tails and move on. Top comment, if it didn't feel good, it didn't count. Yas. When women say they're finding themselves or, or figuring out who they are, they're actually trying out different types of men in the bedroom, seeing what they like. Another comment. So, can I not add a 16-year failure to my body count? I don't know if that means a 16-year relationship or 16 years of sleeping around. If she's been with one man for 16 years, then that's not a problem. If she lost her virginity in that relationship, then her body count is proper. But because she's a modern woman, you can't give her the benefit of the doubt. Notice how she carefully words her statement to make you think she was in a long term. This is what women do to hide the truth carefully parcel their words. You have to be a wordsmith to decode it all. Another comment, if you didn't date it or marry it, it doesn't count. So you see, these modern women aren't worth the headache after all. This is why MGTOW is getting bigger and why less men are getting married today. The next time you get rejected, just think of all the dicks that have been in her mouth, and it will make you feel better that she said no. Hey bestie, <laughs> you're wrong. I think it's time for another adult pre-K lesson. What do you think? All right, turn your listening ears on. Zoop, catch a bubble in your mouth. <gasps> Good job. Okay, here's the thing. Having a preference is something like, I'm looking for a partner who likes kayaking or wakes up early in the morning or loves pizza. <laughs> But when your preferences exclude an entire group of marginalized people, that's problematic. Okay, that's not nice. That's not a preference. If you lump all fat people in one group together as though they are not very different individuals, that's fat phobic. Just like lumping all black people in one group and saying, I don't like black people is racist. And lumping all disabled people in one group and saying, I don't think people in wheelchairs are hot is ableist. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Siri, why am I single? Maybe if you'd stop being a stupid bitch and reply to the people that actually show interest in you instead of chasing someone that you know it. The thing that pisses me most off about the whole concept of feminism is that people think that it is anti-men. Yeah. And it's like, actually, if you're for women's rights, then you're a feminist. Like, you don't have to be a woman to be a feminist. In no. fact, we actually need some more men to be feminists. Yeah. So maybe it's because it has the word feminine. People think like, oh. Yeah. Like, we like we don't want to touch that. Like, I have a girlfriend who, she was like, oh, I'm not a feminist, but, and I was like, sorry, whoa, 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 stop, stop talking about, I said, what did you just say? She said, I'm not a feminist. I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, yeah, I'm not, you know, I don't have hairy armpits. Like, I was like, babe, like, do you understand? And I went and on my Google and I was like, do you understand what feminism means? It means you are pro women's rights. And she was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely pro women's rights. This is a woman who's a CEO of a business, like multi-million dollar business. Oh, wow. She is like a beast, absolutely. Like, yeah. stunning beautiful really feminine but an absolute animal like and she's standing there going i'm not a feminist because she, in her kind of mind she doesn't relate to like the way that that is portrayed and i was yeah. just like wow like we need to rebrand this concept in my head i don't know what you think came to the ground and pulled out a ring and said marry me juliet you never have to be alone the most eye-opening thing I ever learned about men was from my college human sexuality class where the professor told us that men don't actually like women. Not all men. Sure, but hang in. 
He said that the way that our society socializes boys to, quote, become men is not to tell them how to be men. It's just to teach them how to not be women. Don't cry. Be a man. Don't be a pussy. Be a man. Don't be weak. Be a man. Don't be sensitive. Be a man. Don't like those things. Those are girl things. And the tool we use to do the, that kind of socializing, to steer them away from feminine things, is shame. And you just can't go your whole life being told that the worst thing you could do is be like a woman and expect to actually like women at the end of that. But they are also taught that their sexual attractiveness to women and their ability to get women is a status symbol in front of other men. So they will sexually pursue women, but they don't actually like them as people. This is how patriarchal masculinity socializes men and why shame, violence, and disgust are so intricately linked. I find it really interesting that men say stuff like this and then in the same breath complain about how the penal system isn't fair to men or how family courts aren't fair to men or how male victims don't have a lot of recognition or mental health resources. Like, who, who did that? Everyone should be a feminist. Yeah, well, men have issues too. Yeah, the patriarchy affects men too. You guys don't care about male issues. Women are more likely to win custody battles. Exactly, because the stereotypes pushed by the patriarchy that women are more loving and nurturing. Well, men are charged and punished more for the same crime that women commit. As I said, the patriarchy, and over 80% of all crimes committed are by men. You guys don't care about male victims. Guys get sexually assaulted too. Real feminists support male victims. The stereotype that men are strong and can't be victims attributes to this. A lot of male sexual assault victims don't come forward because of men, saying that the man should have enjoyed the sexual encounter. And when women were putting their painted hands on their body so that they could tell their stories, boys went and mocked that. But yes, male sexual assault victims should be taken seriously. Well, feminists just hate men. Someone who actively hates on men is a misandrist, and they cannot be a real feminist because feminists want equality. Okay, well what about hashtag kill all men? It's a joke made in retaliation to all the sexist remarks made by men on this app. And abusers like Chris Brown are so popular. Real men know kill all men isn't about them. <coughs> well hey guys, please excuse my uh, messed up voice. I'm actually sick at the moment, but that's not stopping me from making any more content for you guys. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel and supporting the movement. So I'm out here making videos for you guys. So let's get right into it. She claims that it's the patriarchy that's undermining the man's authority in a nuclear family by incentivizing divorce or deferring to the deadbeat mother in 90% of all child custody cases so a man becomes a slave for 18 years. No, that's called the gynocentric dictatorship. Otherwise, women wouldn't benefit from it. Feminists, also known as useful idiots like this woman in the video, don't think they're destroying society. They obviously think they're on the right side of history. I don't, so... Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Even the man-hating ones think that once all of masculinity and patriarchy is gone, society will finally become a utopia with rainbows and unicorns and unlimited money. In this video, sit back and relax and enjoy the feminists trying to convince you why men need more feminism. They're not joking, trolling, or cosplaying. These are real people who present most modern women. Back to the video, she and many feminists claim they're against the biased laws against men, yet have never marched or protested these laws. It's never even mentioned in the pussy hat rallies. They'll fight for the right for adults to have sex with kids before any men's issue. Ironically, they do. There's a law passed in California, the most feminist state in America, that now allow adults to sodomize teens legally. She claimed, kill all men is a joke and a response to people like Chris Brown, who she claims is still popular because of men. Ironically, it's women who are Chris Brown's biggest supporter, and many of them would line up to get pissed on because of the multiple zeros in his bank account. These feminists have to tell themselves before they go to sleep that they're the good girls. What do the commentators have to say? One of the comments claims, but they don't win more custody battles. When men actually go for custody, they are more likely to win than the women. So 90% of the time women winning custody battles are actually men winning? Does she even do math? This is despite the fact that men have an incentive to win the custody battles because if they lose, they'll be a slave for 18 years, and they still lose 90% of the time. Also, they're forced to pay their ex's lawyer's fees while getting divorced at the same time. Another feminist commented, But what's wrong with misandry though? Millennia of misogyny warrants millennia of misandry. Equality. And that's the excuse most feminists tell each other, that doing wrong to a man is okay because women were treated badly in the past. Another feminist commented, In the US, the father is more likely to win a custody battle. This can't be real. 
But then, against the majority of feminists can be ignorant to reality because they watch Mr. Rachel Madcow. Or other mainstream news channels which will never even mention a man getting shafted by the anti-family courts. So I'm not going to pretend I have any answers for this male loneliness epidemic thing going on, uh, because I feel like it's a complex issue, and also some of those guys it is their fault, and then others it's not. But something I've always found really interesting is that in platonic female friendships, women are very strongly encouraged to give each other a lot of both emotional and physical love and support. Um, and I'm not saying that every woman has friends like that and no men have friends like that. I'm just talking about like what's generally encouraged by society. During the time periods in my life where I've been single, at least as an adult, I've never felt lonely or alone. Um, and never felt a rush to get into a relationship because I have a lot of physical and emotional love and support from my female friends around me. I get a lot of hugs, I get a lot of compliments, I get a lot of like, you are important to me and I value you in my life, let's spend time together, etc. But I was talking to a male friend about this recently and he was saying that the last time that he got like a genuine hug from a man was when he was like 12. Uh, and so the only real genuine physical contact that he ever gets is if he's either hooking up with or in a relationship with a woman. And ironically, the guys I know who do treat their friendships like that are often made fun of for being feminine. Again, I'm not presenting this as like an answer to a problem or something, it's just something relevant that I've been thinking about. This feminist is trying to convince guys to be gay to deal with the loneliness and solitude. That's good that a man doesn't get love unless if it's from a woman in his adult years, because it will motivate him to improve himself and achieve something in life. Otherwise, nothing will get done in society if men were coddled as adults. People need to clean the sewers or exterminate the pests, or run into burning buildings to save lives. The snowflakes raised by feminist single moms aren't doing those jobs because they're softer than baby shit and entitled. It's the blue collar guy raised by a tough dad who needs to own a house to finally get love from a woman. Also, most men have real friendships. Let me explain. To women, a friendship is blowing smoke up each other's ass. So when a guy dumps one, it's not analyzed why he left and how not to do that again. The women friends will call him a jerk and tell their friend she's amazing no matter how bad she acts in a relationship. While men friends will tell each other the hard truth because they really care about each other. If someone isn't getting dates because his life is in the gutters, his friends will tell him to stop dating and improve his life if he wants better results. They won't blame it on women. Let's read the comments. For how much longer do I have to thug it out, man? Chick responds, this is exactly why y'all are lonely, emotional intimacy. No, men are supposed to be in solitude. Also, modern women are landmines, so that doesn't help it either. A dude commented, I have no friends, so boom, problem solved. Majority of society doesn't care about men. That's why most homeless people are men. A soldier wrote, talk to any Spanish or Italian about their household. They will tell how multiple generations live together, taking care of each other. That's how it used to be. Men were part of big families, like one of many brothers. So at the very least, by default, they had a support system they can fall back on. Even more so, it's hard to raise a big proper family when most women care about their career more than being a mom. And it's too expensive now to raise a big family like the old days, because the taxes are too high, so deadbeat single moms can be financially supported. Another guy comments, I get that support from my female friends, and I hug my guy friends, but I do feel they are uncomfortable with it. I'm still going to do it, but I see it. Yeah, no shit. They're not gay. I made you a compilation of videos that I feel fully embody the phrase boys will be boys in a positive and wholesome way. Ice good? Uh -huh. Ice good? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I need a boy! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> See if your belly's full. Here, pull up your shirt with the other hand. Take a deep breath. It says you have room for two more broccolis. You have three left, but you only gotta eat two. Okay. Alright. Alright. Oh, there's the drips. Yes. 
Did you see his face light up? I'm so happy. <laughs> Christian Bale. <laughs> Christian is a fish. That's Christian scale. <laughs> Christian's a bigger fish. That's Christian whale. Oh! oh! <laughs> I aim the gun up in the sky. That's Christian quail. Oh my god! This is nuts. <laughs> Hillary Duff. I don't know what to say. That's Hillary Bluff. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hillary wants me wiped up. That's Hillary Cuff. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary liked the fight. That's Hillary Tough. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. No, I can't say that. Oh! I can't say that. Chris Pine. You see that girl over there? That's Chris Pine. Mm. Has no moral character or back. That's Chris Spine. Oh! Why is she crying? Ah, damn it. <laughs> In the video description, she wrote, What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Implying this is what masculinity should be. A video full of nerds, house husbands, gay men, and the last are feminist chads and Tyrones making dad jokes while probably drinking white claws. Basically, deballed men. Nothing wrong with nerds or Greeks because they do contribute to the intellectual part of humanity. But you notice none of this positive masculinity is showing a man doing something actually masculine such as doing bushcraft skills like starting a fire out of scratch using a flint, or machining a metal part, or calculating the load bearing on a pillar so the bridge doesn't collapse, or practicing combat to protect loved ones. These are all types of things that have built a society and distinguished men. And I guarantee you, despite showing non-threatening activities men do, women like her are drawn to the felons, the anarchist, the cowboy that spits crew, the football player who will throw them out 15 seconds after he climaxes. What do the commenters say? Top comment with 28,000 likes said, The series where the guy throws food at his blindfolded roommate who has to guess what food it was. Yes, these feminists that complain about the earth when they're not complaining about men are advocating to waste food. That's how you know these feminists have it super easy in life. Just wait till shit really hits the fan. Then they'll be looking for a barbarian to protect them and survive. Another feminist commentator, Every time my son does something super kind and sweet, I say boys will be boys. We're taking it back. Sounds like she's raising a simp. Another commenter, I've come to realize that my type is just guys who would participate in wholesome and goofy boys will be boys activities. Translation, after she hit the wall and the masculine men don't talk to her anymore, so she, like most post-wall feminists, are looking for simp beta males to be her retirement plan. At the end of the day, just look at who's getting the most positive response from women including feminists and who's not. It's the most masculine men out there. These modern women will stay in a toxic relationship a lot longer than with a good guy. This is why quote unquote the good guy is going MGTOW than passport bro, where him actually treating a woman right is rewarded with traditional women. You have a heart, a cold one. It is November 19th, aka Men's Mental Health Awareness Day, and I would just like to tell y'all that I don't know what you're expecting here. This specific, like, issue bugs me so fucking much, not because I don't think men's mental health is important, because I do, but because men seem to be sitting around and just waiting for a mental health movement to pop up. You can't be upset that there's no mainstream men's mental health movement when every single time one pops up trying to address the root causes of why men's mental health is so bad, y'all start clowning on it. If y'all are not willing to take a stance against toxic masculinity or this idea of roast culture or this idea that you need to be a man, y'all are not going to create a working mental health movement. Instead of complaining about the lack of a movement, create one. In the description, she wrote, and whole time they be capitalists, homophobic, sexist, the works, and you want me to build your movement? Men have mental health issues because of the gynocentric dictatorship. There are thousands and thousands of women's shelters while there's maybe one for men, and it's for gay men. Let's read the comments. Top rated comment. Literally say we care about men's mental health, then they comment, no you don't. A guy responds, you probably don't. I was literally born a biological man had people who cared, and I cared for my other male friends. He slash she just proved the point by trying to become a female so society would care more for it. Man comments, she just proved our point by shutting him down, lol. 
Someone responded to the comment, she is basically telling them to man up and do something about it. Something we would never tell to women or LGBTQ that go through pain. That's basically what she said. And point taken, she just proved why men's mental health problems exist. Because people tell the men who truly need help to man up, as in they're on their own. Another man points out, I think a lot of men try to raise awareness, but the media doesn't give it any attention. Men have many different movements or philosophies like MGTOW, the Manosphere, the Red Pill, and so on, which dose deal with the root causes of men's mental health, but those are heavily censored and silenced. Again, feminists living in their own bubble. I'm choosing violence today. What the fuck is this? What the fuck kind of a toxic little shit do you need to be to leave comments like this? under a fucking video where a feminist fucking defends you. See, there is this misconception that I hate all men is something thrown around by angry feminists. No, men are continuously overdoing it. They have been doing it for decades and centuries even. And if you're about to tell me not all men, shut the fuck up. New rule, if you're going to say not all men, I want to see the time that you defended women against fucking men being toxic. Unless I see that, I'm going to assume you're just a fucking enabler. You may not personally do that, or your friend may not personally do that, but not holding others accountable, you are enabling that shit. Women are historically the most oppressed group of people all around the fucking world. So when they say, I hate all men, they have a fucking point. This is fucking disgusting. You all need to get your... Better watch out, men. This mangina simp who paints his nails is choosing violence. The comment this guy got triggered over said, Wow, women have gone completely batshit crazy. Now I understand why some women come floating up in a creek somewhere. It sounds like a troll comment with valid points about women going batshit crazy. Yep, this white knight thinks he'll convince more men that they need feminism by blaming all men for one comment. If you look at his profile, the self-proclaimed male feminist who believes feminism is the way to a utopia has no women with him in it. He's as single as an incel, despite getting brownie points from feminists. Majority of feminists wouldn't piss on him if he was on fire. And that's the most ironic thing. He's fighting for the most privileged class in the world. Just one baseless false accusation from a feminist can end a millionaire's career or cause a company to go bankrupt. A woman could be a serial deadbeat baby mama and have 20 kids from 20 different men will get a free house and support from the government. While a man with 20 kids from different women will be thrown in jail if he can't pay child support. Top comment said, I know this is the bare minimum, but it's incredibly refreshing to hear a man not just talking about it, but angry about it too. A pat on the head by feminists. A feminist said, My ex said I was too angry when I spoke on women's issues. But a man gets angry and he is called passionate. We need more men like this one. That's a smart ex to get out of Dodge because it sounds like the relationship was her lecturing and nagging him about feminist bullshit. Another woman comments, Yes, I use the example of, do we tell kids not all strangers? No, because any one of them could be dangerous. That makes a great case on why women should stay home and raise the kids because a career lady means they're exposed to a ton of potentially dangerous strangers. Hopefully you weren't drinking something while watching these feminists. Now you know why feminism is promoted because most are ignorant of the real life consequences the gynocentric dictatorship creates. Transphobes really should be more selective of who they choose to accuse of being a trans woman in front of their kids because their kids are a hundred times braver than they are. And they will just ask the person you accused of being a trans woman if they are a trans woman. And then they'll rat your transphobic ass out for accusing that woman of being trans because she does all of her own lawn mowing. Which is when your kids are going to take the opportunity to come ask that person whether or not she's trans. Okay, if you're Scott D. Henry, pause this video and then watch I it. I did, I did. If you are not Scott D. Henry, this is none of your fucking concern. We'll bleep it out. We'll bleep okay, it out. Scott. Mm -hmm. Now that I have your attention, What's up? is there any way that, like, you can quit your day job and teach a class on how men should act Aww. and how women should be treated? Um, 
<laughs> I'd love to. I'm th- I'm 31 and I'm from Chicago. Okay. And <laughs> these men are saying that they're like 30 plus, but they somehow start acting like kids. Like, <laughs> do I need to change their diaper? Do you need a bottle? Um, so if um, all the guys can get a lesson from you, I think this world would be great, and I think um, I would. <laughs> Scott D. Henry is part of a married couple influencers, so what he and his wife post are skits and videos that portray a happy couple image. It's his job to be a likable husband on TikTok. That's how he makes money. Women don't really know if he's a good man or not. They think he's a good man because he allows his wife to be on social media. And that's what they want. Not only do they want the loyal alpha, but they also want him to be okay with them not paying the full relationship price. So, these modern women asking him to tell men what to do is like kids giving the Santa at the mall a list of what they want for Christmas. Also, most of his followers are women, single post-wall women, so if he does tell men how to act, not a lot of men are going to see it. What do the commenters say? His TikToker wife comments, CEO of being the best man out there. He responds, Babe, only because you make me feel that way. How could I not have confidence and be happy with you as my wife? They're doing the public PDA PR bullshit. It's so fake and annoying, yet these dumb modern women are buying it up. Hook, line, and sinker. A post wall comments, Scott D. Henry's boyfriend boot camp. Let's go! No amount of class is going to get a great guy to commit to someone like the commenter. Her and every other post wall's value isn't high enough to be treated right by a great guy. Besides, most men of quality are going MGTOW. Another chick commented, yes, all of this, and also teach them how to be gorgeous like you, thanks. How dumb can these women get? Scott is a bona fide Chad, who was born with good looks and an NBA height of 6'7". That's 1% of the population on earth that's 6'5 or above. He also has enough sense to feed modern women what they want to see, because he makes money off of them. This Chad they see on TikTok doesn't exist in real life. Accepting that you are most likely going to be alone for the rest of your life is a really hard pill to swallow. And it's not even because there's anything wrong with me or that I am not deserving. I'm just tired. I've spent most of my life recovering from men who have caused so much trauma. My my physical brain um, cannot handle anymore. It is always in survival mode. It is always in fight or flight mode. My, my my brain has never fully recovered from the trauma that has been caused. I meet guys and I feel like I'm constantly looking for a reason to not trust them because I have never experienced a good man before. Like I've never been in a good, healthy relationship. I don't even know what that looks like. I don't even know what to look for. I don't know what is normal. I've never experienced normal. How am I supposed to know? And now I'm 37 and every man that I meet is disappointing and doesn't add value to my life, doesn't make me happy. And I just don't want to settle anymore. How do I know if someone is the one? I mean, is there something wrong with me? I I question it all the time, but I, I know that I'm just fucking traumatized. What does a loving man feel like? What does a healthy relationship feel like? What does it feel like when you have found your person? I, I've been in so many relationships, long relationships, and no one has ever, ever added value to my life or made me feel like I was enough. And it makes me sad that I have never gotten to experience this. It genuinely makes me sad. But I just don't know if it actually exists. So I will probably be alone. And that, that scares me, but I am slowly accepting that this is probably my fate and I need to learn to love myself and I need to tell myself that that is enough, that I don't need a partner to be whole. And that is my journey right now. I'm not an expert. I am not putting expert advice into the world. This is just my journey and what I'm going through right now. And if you're going through the same, you're not alone. I don't know, maybe that's my purpose, to learn to be on my own and let others know that it's okay. 
To answer her question, there is something wrong with her. She's well past her prime, and any man that measures up to her super high standards is trying to get a 20-year-old version of her to commit. She definitely had her chances to find true love when she was younger. She passed them up or picked the wrong men. It's not like she was a nun most of her life. Top comment says, The fact that there is 95k likes and this video has been shared 9,000 times. She responded, I know, it says a lot. Shows the single women epidemic. I'm 37 and trying to accept I'll be alone forever. I meet toxic men. I feel this. Another chick responded, I'm 40 and I'm trying to recover yet again from another toxic man who cheated and having a baby with another woman. This is because these women are going for the top 10% of men when they're not qualified to be in a relationship with these men. And they're surprised when they find out they're a lay or part of these men's rotations. My peace has become too valuable. I'd rather be alone than be with someone who offers me nothing. Sad thing is, women aren't built to be alone. They're going to be miserable without that validation from the man they truly respect. Another responds, Exactly. I've been alone since 2018 and I'm the happiest I've ever been. No headaches, anxiety, and more money to spend on myself. This is hilarious. She's acting like women are the ones who spend money on the dates. Even someone like her wouldn't want to go Dutch. And this is extreme cope. Yes, they may be glad they don't have to compete for the top men out there, but that's the reason why modern women are in this position. They give the top men sex for no or very little commitment while they make the great guys wait for a month and jump through hoops. Another chick commented, Embrace it. When women are just going to start living in little communities together as retirees taking care of each other and I'm here for it. Maybe that is a good idea. The single, bitter women can be quarantined in some retirement home away from society. The women in the video responds, I'm so here for that. These women aren't lesbians. They're going to get extreme withdrawals from not getting dick. These are the men the women in the... The text on the video reads, The new guy asked me why I'm so scared to be in a relationship. My track record, X number one, kidnapped me when I tried to break up with him. X number two, the Marine who was sentenced to six years of prison. X number three, the Italian mobster who left a jar of teeth on my doorstep. X number four, the Jersey Shore cop who cheated with over 20 women. X number five, the scam artist who was living a double life. X number six, the bipolar reality TV star. X number 6, which should be 7, but the bitch is dumb. The narcissistic celebrity. Maybe he should just read the book. And her video description explains the book reference. We all love a good story. My life has many. Men don't want a well-seasoned woman. That means she's used up. This isn't the same a man who's been through trials and tribulations to become a man. Men build value while women preserve value. Oh yeah, and this bitch got to date a real-life celebrity, yet still ended up empty-handed. 99% of men will never even share the same room as a female celebrity, yet alone date one. And it goes to show these women want to be with celebrities without the consequences of being with one. A celeb is most likely going to be full of himself. He's going to get the attention of most women. Society caters to him, so of course it's his way or the highway, and of course he's going to think he's the king of the world. What she was mad about was that he had the upper hand. She had to do things under his terms or she gets replaced with a younger, hotter woman. Leonardo DiCaprio dumps women when they turn 25. No ifs, ands, or buts. They can be the best girlfriend, yet he's replacing them with someone younger. And yet knowing this, these broads still opt to hang out with him on his yacht. What do people think about this? Top comment says, Looks like you got a type. She responded, Did. More like she was their type until they moved on. Another chick commented, Wait, I know this is a book which I obviously have to read, but this is actually based off of your life or a dramatization because nobody has that much. She responded, No, I wrote a book for a reason. My life story is pretty unbelievable. 
This chick didn't accomplish anything. She just spread her legs to criminals and celebrities. Sure, it might be a great read, like a rom-com. Another comment, older men, mature, smart, caring, treat you right. She responded, I've dated older men. They weren't any better, lol. It looks like she's the common denominator then. Who's right here? So I need everyone's opinion on this. I was talking to a guy yesterday and he was telling me I can have these two things with looking for a man and I call bullshit. So I said, I'm looking for a man who can take me fishing, easy, and who can do the deed right. He's literally told me I can't have both, that those two things do not come in one package. Seriously? How is that a thing? Or not a thing, I should say. So I believe there's good men out there. They may live on the East Coast and not near me, but someone around me somewhere has to be a good man. So please explain this to me. Who's right? She wrote in the video description, who's right, me or the dude? He's wrong in the sense that they do come in one package. That is, doing the deed means great in bed, but they're just not checking for her. These great guys are looking for great women who aren't on social media and aren't has-beens like her. Yes, I'm a mom, but wait a minute. She's an overweight single mom with a kid from a black man because in a post, it shows a black man standing next to her when she was giving birth. So if she's looking for white men to commit to her, none with those qualities will want her because the kid is going to tell them they're the second best to Tyrone. And if she's looking for black men, with those qualities, they're even harder to find. They're either taken or committed to someone else. Let's read the comments. A chick comments, Girl, you deserve it all. He's clearly just not the one if he can't get on your level. Next. No, she doesn't deserve all. Only virgins who save it for marriage do. And the level, being an overweight single mom is actually below most men in sexual value. Women have a false sense of reality and expectations because other women lie to them. It's one big modern woman circle jerk. Tons of guys in the comments sections qualify to her. Um, yeah, I can absolutely do both. And no, I ain't on the East Coast. Texas, sweetheart. You need an Alabama man, girl. I'm in Ohio and can do both. Well, I can tell you this. I live in Illinois and the only way to know for sure is to meet up. Let me know. Despite these great guys, she's not going to entertain any one of them. Someone finally says, Idaho is full of great women who can multitask and they all hang with men who can do the same. Exactly. Why would great men want to be with her when they can be with great women who are childless and fit or thin? So I asked my friends five reasons that I'm still single. Let's unpack this together, okay? First one being Abby, my best friend since childhood. One, you don't deal with disrespect. That is true. Two, sometimes I dodge red flags like it's my job, respectfully. Unfortunately, very true. <laughs> um, number three, you don't have time for bullshit. I just simply do not. I don't. Even if I was dodging red flags, I would eventually figure it out and be like, I'm out of here. Um, number four, SoundCloud rappers. Unfortunately, this goes without saying, I somehow have ended up talking to at least five SoundCloud rappers, rappers of some sort, musicians in my lifetime. I don't know what magnet is on my head to be doing that, but I, I, I don't want any part of it. Number five, hinge boys, hinge boys. You guys know the deal, okay? Everybody on hinge, trash, mostly trash. Number six, Chipotle has my heart, it does. Like if you can't beat Chipotle, I don't want it. We have my other friend Lauren from back home in Pittsburgh. She says, one, too hot to handle. She's right. Number two, ass so fat, boys can't hang. Also right. <laughs> number three, Marshall's your number one boy forever and always, that is my dog. That is so true. Number four, their jokes aren't as funny as yours and they're insecure. Yeah, like I'm gonna be honest, I really think like they say that whenever you're in a relationship with someone or you're hanging out with someone and you're like, oh my God, I feel so safe or I, like things feel so good. Are you actually having a fun time or is it you that's causing the fun time? It is me that's probably causing the fun time with anyone that I'm hanging out with. So 100% funnier than anyone I hang out with. Um, number five, your boss and they're all losers. 
Yeah, unfortunately, because if I had a winner, they'd be sitting here right by my side right now and I wouldn't be single. So yes, that is correct. Number six, you're such a fun time. They'll go into shock because no one compares. A lot of them probably are sitting there like cardiac arrest right now because they're like, where's Michaela at? I don't make the rules. Number seven, it's still time to have fun and get as much Mick as you can. <laughs> so funny. The last reason is why she's single. Every worthwhile guy knows she's for the streets. She said it on camera to the world. She, like most modern women who are hoes, think they're too good for everyone despite being the neighborhood bicycle. She has stated many times one way or the other she's a great time. That's not a relationship value. It's a hookup or friends with benefits type of value. Party chicks are for parties because once the parties stop, they're a hangover. She talked about talking to SoundCloud rappers and this is something a lot of modern women will do. They'll try to build something with a struggle rapper, Ray Ray or Pookie who barely passed the 5th grade, but they refuse to build with someone who's building a legit business or working up the ladder in a real career. What do the comments think? Top comment, I dated a rapper. I was like, no you're not. He's like, yeah, I have a song and video with insert rapper's name, then we YouTube it. I was like, dated as in past tense. If she really did date him. Usually, women will say they dated someone to cover up what they actually did. In this case, she probably hooked up with the rapper like get flown out or did a friends with benefits for a period of time. It just goes to show, women come across a high value man, exactly what they want, and they fumble the bag because they don't know how to keep him. Another comment, you are one bad bitch queen shit only. The woman in the video responded with three hearts. A queen only screws the king, not the whole town below the castle. These thoughts have no problem outing themselves on the internet. Do they not know the internet is forever? Do they know men can read comments and watch videos? Another comment. Love the fact that Marshall is your number one, and if you ask me, I would say it's because you have actual standards and expect more than just the bear. She responded, True. Thanks, bestie. These women will raise these animals like they're kids. Dogs and cats are additions to a family, not the center of it. And they're similar to men jerking off. It will ruin the motivation to actually get the real thing. In men's case, get the woman. And the woman's case, when raising pets like kids, it stunts them from getting actual kids of their own. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.